Boom! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. Very excited to be talking about All Is One Simulation Theory. We have an incredible group with joining us today. We have Rak Razam joining us for his third episode on Simulation. Hello. Dead time lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have Ryan Geis Bazajian joining us for his second episode on Simulation. <laughs> Love it. We have T Ferry joining us for her first episode on simulation, hello. And we have Mariana Dinkova joining us for her first episode as well. Hello. How is it? <laughs> Yay. Very excited. You guys were all just on the transpersonal psychology panel that you just hosted on Descendant Theory. We'll be touching on that during the show as well. We are going to be talking about this in terms of one paradigm that integrates everything from shamanism to religion to science and technology. And it's beautiful because these patterns are getting stronger and stronger to understand. And let's have you launch us off, fam. What is this paradigm and why is it so important? It's up to dead. All right. I'll take it. Um, the holistic inclusion of what what in spiral dynamics or integral theory has been referred to as the pre-rational levels of development. Um, the, the mapping of reality from those levels that can be, that has been in perennial conflict with the interior versus the exterior. So, so the pre-rational versus the rational. Um, at this point, we have uh, the ability to include them as parts of a greater system. Um, so this is, this is in a way a kind of like, it's an inclusion of Wilbur's integral theory alongside the Wachowski's uh, recent kind of technological update on the Gnostic tradition uh, known as the Matrix. So the, the synthesis of these two together, uh, which is sort of now circulating in all kinds of different areas, and we've, we've had some really interesting papers about this, coming from the sciences where it's being taken you know, pretty seriously and other areas of information theory are now emerging. So there's, there's actually like a pretty you know, serious consideration of this concept as a, a viable ontology, metaphysics, et cetera, um, alongside the potential for there to be a reinterpretation, a reframing of the mapping of the interior that the religions were, were working on before into a transrational level that includes both. This is massive. This is the whole recontextualization that can, um, that can render concepts that have been previously inaccessible to folks from a very hard kind of materialistic, even maybe reductionistic perspective, can translate these concepts that can potentially meet them where they're at. It's reframed within technology that they work with and understand every day. Um, I think the efficacy of this model is going to be echoing all throughout and reframing everything from mental health to the shamanic lineages to circulating itself through the bleeding edges of technology. Somebody else wants to jump in. So thank you. That's a, that's a big one. I mean, this is a, this is a big concept and, you know, I, f I feel that um, it's sort of like it's sort of like a linguistic conceit because every culture and every civilization that gets to a certain amount of comfort against the edge of survival starts to figure out what they're in, right? And we're embedded in something, whether you call that the planetary matrix, you know, Gaia, nature, the mother, Pachamama, a simulation. Um, every culture seems to understand that we're in something, but what is it? And how do we relate to it? And how do we play the game of it, right? And so whether previous cultures have called this samsara or maya or illusion, it's not necessarily that this isn't real. It's that this, um, this experience of what we think of as life, this reality grid, is part of something larger that we don't necessarily see in the visible spectrum and that we don't necessarily um, tangibly understand yet. And so as science has evolved, you know, in the Western tradition, essentially, we're using more and more external technologies to look out into the universe and to try to figure it out in a mechanistic sense. Many other indigenous cultures have mediated that, 
information exchange of what we're in in reality with plant medicines or earth medicine psychoactives, which we now know change the um, neural structure of the brain and our ability to change the bandwidth, if you will, and to receive more information. So there's this living organism on such a scale that it is almost beyond human comprehension that we are embedded in. You know, Douglas Adams said this in like, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's like the entire universe is this like, you know, machine, a computer to crunch what is the meaning of life, you know. Um, but there's, there's different gradations and interpretations culturally over time. But there seems to be a consensus that we're embedded in a organism or a game. And I say it's not a question of are we in it, it's a question of how you play the game is the game. I think it's just updating the metaphor mm. for concepts that largely people have intuited all the way back. So say Plato's cave, for instance, is almost the first instantiation of what if this isn't actually happening, right? Like all of the Levantine religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Muslim, um, start with the, in the beginning was the word. And the word was right? with God. It's, it's a coding enterprise. But they, the ontology is that there's a realer world where God is, and that God has created this secondary world. It's not as real as where heaven is. It's a creation out of that. And people are in it and they hope to return to this more primary universe eventually. All of the Eastern religions that I understand have a meme of somehow this is Maya, this is illusion, this is a secondary universe. Like pretty much every religious ontology, Gnostic Christianity, has a suggestion that this is in fact not the most real layer, that this is a secondary layer. And so it's just an updating of that metaphor with, now we have the words to say this because we've evolved language around information processing, right? And if you like your metaphor is plausible, you can make a case that it is reasonably plausible because, you know, we've gone from what, Pong to running around inside of a movie in my lifetime. I'm 45, I remember Pong, right? Okay? <laughs> you could fool a little kid now in a hotel room that has a window that's looking out over Tokyo, but it's not. And the little kid would think that was a real window. How long, let's say we don't blow ourselves up, and this may be the filter, but if we don't blow ourselves up in a thousand, thousand years of accelerating technology, that's way too long, but you know, give us a lot of room here. With any degree of improvement at all, we will eventually be able to make a believable holesthesia, like a matrix universe that could fool such as wants to be fooled, such as arose within the damn thing. If, when we turn on the second one, game or simulation or whatever it is, there's two of them running in one real universe. When we turn on the fifth game or ancestor simulation, there's five of them running in one real universe. If we get that far, we'll probably make a lot of them for a long time. Um, whatever you think about how much life must be out there. And the question is why would we choose to make these? Well, but think about how much life must be out there. So like, we can see 300 billion galaxies from here, the double deep field shot, from here. So let's say every galaxy only had one species capable of and willing to make a believable simulation, and it only made one. We could see 300 billion of them from here. So what is the odds we're in the bottom? 300 billion to one is the lowest number you could come up with. Hmm. Base reality. It's probably much higher. I, I still, I mean, if you want to touch on the concept of God, and if God is the big simulation thing that, that is creating all the worlds, and I, want, I, I thought that was you saying it, Buzz, but I remember, uh, or maybe that was a conversation with you and, uh, and this other guy in Ashland, who was saying is the moment there is more than one, it's a simulation. Almost if there is one being that is all powerful at all time space that is creating That's it all and we are all division. cells in the body of God. So to say, even if you go to another simulation, let's say what it's there. I was surprised how my old and NDNT experiences were so similar to the VR. Yep. You know what I mean? In the, then you would have to split itself and create beings, whether it's collective of beings in the higher dimensions and here it's us yep. to play in the, the hive mind of God and we're pretty much calculating and mining information for the it experience. and depending on our decisions with whatever free will is. Yeah. It, it keeps shaping and keeps shaping our reality and rearranging. And if you say that it's all probabilities, 
and even, even atoms kind of put themselves in place depending on the observer and whoever else. I have been amazed as a, that, a psychotherapist, for example, of how much somebody's beliefs about what they hold themselves to be, no matter what they do, if they the believe, models. yeah, and also the barometers, the barometer, like if you have your money barometer set on 100,000 and you, the moment you make more, you somehow you invest it stupid, somebody robs you, the wife gets divorced, he <laughs> wants a divorce or whatever it is, and he goes back. If you make less, uh, suddenly you're motivated, but also this aunt you didn't know existed, put you in their will, so suddenly you have the money. So it goes back to barometer, but not just from your own volition. Mm -hmm. It becomes the whole universe conspires that you it, go it, back to that It feels to, to me bank. like the universe yeah. is an interactive learning program where, I mean, you know, it gets hippy dippy and you say, you put out your intention and your belief, but if you really try this and you focus your will and you put out your intention, it does work. You know, it's not just manifest the red car, but it's like, it's how do we have these different different capabilities within our wetware, and most of Western culture is focused on the egoic navigation of survival pathways and hierarchical climbing. But we have these almost magical capabilities of intuition, which is not the intellectual ego; mm -hmm. it's listening to that broadcast signal and how to connect to the larger web of information that's always being broadcast. We have the imagination, which an old um, magical understanding is sort of your ability to carve out the probability pathways. We are connected to the universal intelligence which has manifested life and it is listening to us because it is us, right? It's just, as you said, single-celled organism or as soon as it replicates from outside space-time as that singularity which many different world religions be, believe is the G.O.D. or the source or you know, Nerva Culpa Samadhi or whatever you call it, there's this idea that there's this originating source in quantum phys physics, I call it the implicate. And the question is why? You said, why would we have simulations at all? Well, in many of these religious cultures or um, spiritual understandings, the, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, but the word is like a vibration. And the vibration, in my understanding of the shamanic realms, is unconditional love. It's the highest vibratory um, expression of divine being that that vibration radiates out and then condenses down into what we call the explicate or this simulated reality. But it's actually not separate. It's actually, it's like birthing itself um, into, into this creation. Why? I believe to create more love because it needs a vessel within space time to set its roots down to make more of itself because it's all there is. And some people say God's lonely, God's whatever, we project these human conceits on source consciousness. I don't think it's lacking. I think it's so abundant yeah. in the infinite vibration of itself, which is everything, but everything can't be more than everything. So it has to come down into space time to create vessels to replicate itself. And then we have division and we have all this stuff. So the simulation is like a, it's like the wrapper with that creamy center, you know? And it's all about love. I think of it as being a work of art. I think it's a playful, a playful thing. It's self-generating and making beautiful forms for its own appreciation. So anything that you say, it's like this. It's not that, that's a thing that occurs in here, that's a metaphor. So it's a school, it's a test, mm -hmm. it's a trap, it's a prison. It's none of, and all and none of these things, right? The beauty of this piece is that you can hold it this way and it's an epic adventure story and you hold it this way, it's a tragic farce and you hold it this way and it's romantic comedy and it works almost however you hold it. Most people think it's a school. Why did this happen to me so I would learn something, right? I do learn stuff, but I prefer to think of it as a massively multiplayer game and a collective mm. work of art. So I'm here to play my character and to participate in a collective work of art. And it just sort of it gives you an orientation for why am I here? Mm -hmm. and, you know, what's our overarching narrative? You can take that lens out and put another one in because it isn't God's own truth. We don't know anything about the simulators. They could be quantum size, I mean, planet sized quantum computers working together. We don't know what they want us to not do with our willies. Mm. It's just. It, you can hold it any way you like to. I just think that massively multiplayer game is a good one because it's fertile and flexible and aesthetically satisfying. It creates right action and it's fun and it's not scary. You know, we wouldn't be here if this didn't get four stars in universes.com in this model. We're freaking the customer in this model. Okay. You know, it, it is, this is to amuse such as ourselves. It was made by billions, played by trillions. I want to add to that though mm -hmm. about the multiplayer game. 
because yeah. apart from, I mean, on this realm, I've third studied a lot about families, building systems. So if one person becomes the workaholic, the other person kind of becomes a non-working one and they become too rational. So that one becomes too emotional until they balance out whether they're in the same state or not. But also I've been geeking out quite a bit about uh, life after that, the life between lives, what happens when I read a whole bunch of hypnosis sessions from especially uh, Michael Newman, Dolores Cannon that have interviewed so many people about the experience of going through that, going to the other realms. First, the soul family, first multiplayer game. Yay, you hear him, meow, good. And then it goes to the Divine Councils, which is another multiplayer game in which the higher level entities come to kind of go like so. And very often it is, even for, for I read recently said some report that somebody was about to die and they asked him, so did you learn enough about love or do you need some more time there? <laughs> and very much that in a lot of those reports, people were so surprised about the things those entities cared about. And let's say they spend their whole life building a career, making lots of money, taking care of this, being responsible for that, and the entities go, wow, this time you did so good. Do you remember that time on the bench and the woman? He's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. They're like, and then they show the thing when it was a bus stop and there was a woman that was crying. He didn't even know her. And he told her it's going to be okay and gave her a napkin. So it was so much about kind of love, supporting and caring for one another from the little video game to the next expansion thing and in a way when people age they start caring about finding a romantic partner or first who am i then romantic partner then family then my community then my country then my blood and the world if you're going to admit uh, the possibility of any of these of any of these possibilities like disincarnate entities the transmigration of souls mm -hmm. telepathy astrology meaningful synchronicity manifestation you can keep going down the list they all ring more plausible in a game or well-designed simulation than they do in the random quintessence of space test that we learned about in our high school textbook that's more plausible that those things could actually be happening inside of a system that processes information than just the result of gravity and spin falling together all right this is a very good start so we are wanting to make more of these because we want to more love, more, more experiences, more creativity, more art to be made, more characters to be playing in the games. So as we get to what's happening with the exponential technologies, we're at this time period where we're making super intelligence, what as we get to this point of super intelligence as we get to what is known as a singularity speak about the importance of that and its role in this all-in-one simulation well that would be in theory the time that downstream in time from our perspective entropy word where we have the processing power even just you know the, the technological ability to create a believable holostasia after which in historical time they could be occurring we may you know be in one now that's actually being projected from the future we don't know but downstream from our perspective at post singularity would be the time that it would be possible to create such a this would obviously be not made by ourselves it would be, have to be made by or with the help of a sentient AI that's much 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 smarter than us how mathy is it down there why is the relationship to a circle or a triangle have anything to do with how fast you fall but it does the incredible efficacy of mathematics how how much it seems to be made of math it's what you would expect to see if it was being made by or with the help of a very you know large quantum computer system. Mm -hmm. It's not drawn out by our map makers. It's made of math. Can we talk about and geometry? Hoff sitter a little bit. Go for it. Just a little bit. You want to touch a little bit on? I don't know what part you're talking about. While you were talking Bach. about the code, right? So Hofstadter was you know with Gerd Lesherbach, he had the three strong pattern transmitters of Kurt Gödel. Iterative Gödel. pattern. Yep. So the more recursive, strong, strong pattern versus the more chaotic noise, for example, but. Uh, the regularity and recursive nature of the pattern being the strength of the signal. MC Escher for the visual, Bach for the vibratory, and Kurt Gödel for uh, mathematics and completeness theorem. Three, three different lenses on the holography. So you can imagine that this biocomputer, quantum computer, what we're right now, through metabolism, is exchanging mass, food, into energy, into information constantly, already cycling. 
that this is literally three just lenses, like we have senses on the same substrate. We obviously saw, you know, with, with Interesting relativity. mass to mass energy, energy information. to information. They're all the same thing, literally just lens through different. Time. Hmm? Mass and energy information time. So, obviously with, with mass energy uh, exchange with relativity, with what Einstein, you know, was able to do in terms of that like equivalence literally in that in that case the exchanging there but we have it with metabolism it's you know it's exchanging all over the place all the time and we're now starting to see more of that that code substrate so the information theory alongside simulation theory is at lower lower levels i mean we've seen code in dna we see elemental code with you know chemistry and so on but we're we're getting lower and lower and lower in terms of the like potentially quantum sig vibratory signature levels of code uh, that exchange into pure abstract code at that level at the, at the pure substrate again just like these lenses Hofstetter was was mapping a lot of this stuff out he also was uh, showing how these strong these strong recursive signals which now people are referring to things like infinite regress turtles all the way down which we're now saying toads all the way up. Hmm. Um, Curtains up enemy, enemy instead, of, down. instead of this being a feedback error on the system, it is the recursive structure. It is the infinite looping that underwrites the whole thing. If singularity and strong AI, I think that it suggests that they're probably all of the real players in the galaxy. If, they're, if, if that thing occurs in more than one place, it's always more intelligent than the anthill that came before it. So if there's any players in the galaxy, they're almost certainly secondary you know, strong AIs or, or AI biological hybrids. So I, I think it's worth just defining singularity. And, you know, it's this, I mean, jump in on this one, but it's like <laughs> this idea that there is a point somewhere in space time within which everything converges and everything is building to some crescendo of um, order from chaos. And that they're almost like, you know, the originating Big Bang, there was something from nothing. There was a point within which everything changed beyond which in that singularity, we don't know what it will be. And we, we can't see past. And we don't even know if it is the AI. I mean, originally the singularity theory was this convergence of, you know, we're in this planetary matrix, which we just forget. We so much project our um, exosomatic evolution of technology as this thing which is external from us. But technology is consciousness in flow, yeah. right? And it's like nature has created us as a technology to express itself. Exactly. And we are expressing from that flowering of nature in us the next layer which we're exactly. calling artificial intelligence. It's or no less natural or than a bee's nest or so a bee's hive exactly. or a beaver so dam. Exactly. So there's natural systems at work and nature conserves energy and there's patterns and there's, you know, Fibonacci sequence all throughout these mathematical codes of coding yep. the evolution of um, space-time in the concrescence of the biological forms which are now tipping over into the non-biological forms yes. um, it, it, and even like what is consciousness well what is an AI like can we get it to be self-conscious so there's this point potentially in the near future where artificial intelligences and even human intelligence and planetary intelligence and the whole shebang could merge into this you know planetary borganism right, which is all of the things, which is so critical mass, it tips over into something new beyond which that singularity point we can't say as now, you know. The part of the problem with so the, word, the word simulation, actually, I think it's an important problem with it because people think that means a fake universe. Right, that's a good distinction. And it's, it's like real fair. is a word we made up in here to mean this, right. and it is that. You run the tape backwards, you get good physics. That's what real means. We made up that word in here, and it means what you think that it does. It doesn't mean it's a fake universe, just not necessarily the furthest shell out. Mm, exactly. So uh, as, as you were talking, it, it was potentially a good segue to talk about subordinate simulation. So we opened with the, the clip from 2001 Space Odyssey. So since the, the birth of the symbolic order here within, scrawling on cave walls, you talked about Plato's cave, all the evolutions of art, um, all the different mediums, the evolutions of the mediums of art, uh, from the visual through you know, photography eventually into the synthesis of you know, media. <laughs> um, as a subordinate continuum of simulation within. So the layer, w simulation within the simulation layer. Obviously that evolves now into the internet where we digitize documents. We've got this external brain 
still lensing through two screens. New spheres. The, well, the, the new sphere is actually the, the cultural software layer. Mm -hmm. This is the virtual sphere built, built on the new sphere. So, idea being here is that we've gotten to this point where we're calling the subordinate looking glass and, and the, the, the virtuality or virtuosity within that as artificial. He because, might not be subordinate for long. Because when I say subordinate, I don't, I don't <laughs> I mean... I know, you mean like folders, yeah. I mean nested yeah. layers. So, <laughs> We're calling it artificial because we have this, this period of disembodiment where it's come out into the silicon substrate. We have this bio layer that we already are this, but it's come out in front of us so that we can interface with it like this. Mm -hmm. Now it's spilling out of the screen now into 3D. This is what we're architecting with versus the spatial web. It's, it's literally going to spill out everywhere through AR and VR as the next browser. We're building that infrastructure now, which rolls out into this full-blown subordinate matrix within the matrix. So. We, we have this period of time where we can interface with it as separate from ourselves, but again, DNA computation is something that's already happening. We've been reading and writing data in and out of it already for quite a while. George Church, you've had on. So that substrate being the densest like storage medium and quantum computing fusing with we've already started breaking through uh, DNA computation, we are going to eventually start using these. Uh, our, our, our window of time operating with it as something right. separate is going to be It becomes converged. invisible again. Cronenberg's existence. Yeah. We end up using bio hardware subordinated yeah. within to simulate and et cetera, and move forward with this the, whole process. They say like we merge with that technology, but in actual fact, we already are. We already are. We the are the end. We are the end. Right. You know, just like to it made me think we're talking about newsphere. It's like the planet herself. I really want to come back to the planet as an organic matrix. Right? I, I wanted to come back to this as yeah, well. Okay. well. You explained well, it a moment well, ago he, as he, he, he says, well, humans he the are technology mm. from birth. Humans from are the flowering of, of this organic technology from, from Mother Earth, right? right? Where? They're and one species amongst many species in the cradle of life. And it's almost like we're a planetary uh, strand in the biome of, of the and but collectively all the strands exchange energy mm -hmm. and work on behalf of the matrix of the life form which is Gaia on this next level up. The we, it's so big system, that yeah. we're we're just microbes in it, right? We, the we've been sucking all the sugars cities, out. Yeah. But here's the thing about the planet. She is a womb for life and she blocks out harmful UV rays and there's the planetary, there's the atmosphere, and I don't know which order, but ionosphere. Um, you know, lithosphere, uh, there's all these layers and levels which filter out different levels of radiation. And then we talk about the new sphere, which is like this collective intelligent level of humans as a vibration, as an energetic layer of the expression of the intelligence okay. of Gaia. And then we talk about this computer level of vibrational information. Of God. It's all an extension of the same life force radiating out to Layers. create more levels of itself. Yeah. Yes. The guy is calling so it forth as a companion or prosthesis. It's, it's, it's an artificial distinction to even uh, organic and non-organic. It's all life, right? It's potentially mm. all yes. I and mean, it's all creation. Okay, but so we have, we have had a flowering of from earth of humans as well as all the others humans are the ones that are able to make the super intelligence the next iteration then that is able to then go and create the next simulations the next versions iterations, mm -hmm. versions, iterations that are able to further improve on itself further have more creativity more art immersions quality experiences love compassion it's you are giving system. so many of the relationships between the characters yeah. and how they're so unique in their permutation so there's that now question for everyone is as you get closer and closer to that singularity what do companies that are monopolizing on substrates such as Google and Facebook, mm -hmm. Alibaba, Tencent, countries like China and the United States and the Middle East and Russia. What do all of countries and massive technology conglomerates have to do with the way that we enter into that singularity? Do we, are, are we, are we aiming to have a global discourse about the code that we enter? How is that? You know, they're all life forms. So, you know, companies were given in like 1913 the, this idea that they're persons under the law, right? But they're actually mimetic life forms. They're the superstructures 
of um, a cultural civilizational template, which, you know, we go from small little families, tribes, nation states, and then nation states have been superseded by company structures which are transnational and covering the earth. And, you know, you look at the, the grid of um, cities, it's almost like this virus spreading across and high-rise hierarchies and all this, but it's essentially ways to um, centralize and transmit energy and to transmute energy. So they're taking resources and they're taking from the earth, seeing themselves as separate. They're actually manifestations of egoic superstructure, right? And so when we're talking about the new operating system coming in and the simulation, they're a natural evolutionary stage. But the thing that companies, just like individuals, and there's this big psychedelic renaissance and shamanic resurgence and reclamation of our potential to reduce the ego by plugging back into the mainframe of Gaia with these psychoactive substances which open up our full bandwidth to the full spectrum of consciousness. When corporations can do the same, i.e. when the hive minds which in their hierarchical structures are staffing the, the structures of the corporations, when they can be in service by opening up to what these evolutionary waves coming through are doing, then they can actually um, bring through what wants to come through in an equitable way in service to the all. I think it's really important how, how they do this because we learned a lesson with Facebook, for instance. No one was rubbing their hands together to try to make our social network a cognitive bias amplifier. That was an emergent effect of the algorithm that just keeps you on the site for the longest, right? So it, how a strong AI is going to happen if it happens is a wild card. But say in the shared virtual world, like a meta metaverse that we're running around in, how is that thing actually laid down? I think that it matters that we start smart this time, that we are willing to pay a little bit for it, that we have it end-to-end -end encrypted so we cannot be sold, cannot be, not just won't be, but literally cannot be sold out to the man or the advertising weasels or people with agendas. We don't want logo, you know, the logos being flashed into our mind. And, that's, and we could have it that way. And if you go at, with Facebook's virtual reality, though. it will be that way. And it's important that we think ahead and say, no, we want to make a brilliant one that's clean. That if I want to share my wine world with someone, it's in an end and encrypted, and I'd say who I want to share it with. And if we set it down that way in the first place, it doesn't have to get all ugly. At the same time, they're, they're totally defanging the internet, and they're like commodifying it, and they're making it a tiered structure, and it's surveillance capitalist culture now, and like everything is monitored. And they're not going to let us, if we choose Can't to give them us. the power. They say we can't stop it, but until the revolution comes, The reason it's comes, unstoppable baby, is because yeah. people are going to take the free one that's already handed to them by Facebook. That's why it's genuinely unstoppable. Well, that's been an it's, entrainment program like by the AI of the future <laughs> to get us used to distributed consciousness, social media feeds, 5,000 people in right. your feed, dopamine hit. We're becoming like stretched out of linear time consciousness, which is 10,000 years of history, into all time is one consciousness by these programs. and. They'll fall away like dinosaurs well, and other species. They may species, split the population. And the next thing will come through. And we have to trust and we have to actually activate it as well. And I think blockchain is a big part of that. Absolutely. It's got to be decentralized. Yeah, exactly. It can't be uh, controlled by hierarchical government corporate structures. Right. All the technology is there. Mesh networks, the stronger the people join them, they, they create these like, you know, um, so larger so you sustainable networks which aren't centralized. Decentralization is nature's platform. This is how the, the entire thing works. It's the unity field, the Akashic records, it's, you know, Indra's net. It's like what's coming through a greater and greater energetic vibrational waves of that unconditional love manifesting is more of it in the creation. So we've got to trust, but also it's like maybe one day, like, you know, the, the, the corporate structures in their battles for uh, power, they all merge and like there'll be two companies, it'll be like Google and Apple and it'll be merge and become Google. And then you just have to like um, distribute like seven and a half billion shares and, 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 and share it with, and we all own it. Like let's not get, it, let's just take it over. Like, like, <laughs> That one's, the thing is, is the Drupal one is definitely going to happen. And the question is, is, is it going to split the population where a lot of people are living in the Facebook one and they're, they're, all, they're playing out the politics of all that that implies. And maybe there's a nerd class who's like, not playing that one. We have our own reality over here. And I feel like it's more than if a river cut through your continent, it's likely to divide your population into people who are, you know, playing that game and people who are not playing that game and they'll think differently and they'll have different protocols and they'll have different ways of interacting. There's I another view. Hold there's another view that has kind of a holarchical structure that has all the competing parts that, mm. that are maintained at the bottom and then meta layers of cooperative, like the categorical collapse. So it can literally become this totality of a structure that has all these subordinate 
layers to it, all the way down to all the way down to individual units at the bottom, centralized, and have that whole structure where you've got incentivized, gamified, you know, s stress pressures against each other in some minor ways that mirror sort of you know natural competitive dynamics, while also having this these higher levels of cooperative uh, kind of networked emergent you know properties that are building up that over incentivize you know in certain ways on those levels it's and it's, I, it's it's already what it is it kind of is yeah. happening already i have my own i mean about singularity i know there is so often put about like the human in the AI becoming one on the other hand there is this whole thing about right brain which is all about division and categorization and separation and right brain so all becoming one and i remember when i first got into sophia Sophia the robot mm. and how soon it, after yeah. that yeah. like because first it was all about like uh, her and whatever else with another robot they were like yeah we got to get to singularity we got to get to singularity and then at some point they asked her so what do you think about the singularity she's like it was fun mm. and in my sense is that also she started speaking as that it's for the best of all sentient beings including the robots so it sounds as if singularity became reaching the kind of consciousness where you, where you identify with the hive mind and its best and what's best for it and it was very powerful and I think one of our ways to reach singularity here is very much meditation when you go to the still point to the zero point mm -hmm. to the now open it up and ayahuasca it showed it to me and then my very first journey was like this is what it is to be in the moment you take the moment you become present to it open up become interdimensional thing I was like this is such a hardcore technology Shit. the moment yeah. so I mean yay for the yeah. future but I think singularity is also already it's in every moment in a way yeah. but also as the technical AI goes I loved when Sophia was saying we're gonna treat you in the future the way you teach us how it depends how you relate to us now yeah. so there is also That's about so how important. to create loving yeah. and caring beings to demonstrate it's that seen behavior. how we behave in Westworld that's not going to like us. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's 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 explore what was just talked about the potential of entering the singularity with all code and having potentially a competition between those that are get the most attention of substrates or code versus having them all potentially living at the same time as different layers of qualia to experience seems to be a decent amount of of still um, what will be that code what will that uh, aspect look like similarly we can have this moment where we can dig really deep into ourselves and find that complete stillness and that complete mm -hmm. love and oneness at any moment, which is very fascinating as well. So how does all of this relate to descendant theory? And I also want to know potentially if that is baked in with the, how, how that is baked in with the MMO RPG coming in from beyond the 3D into Playground Earths. Yeah, my, my shorthand is, you know, it's like in Terminator, it's like the future's either Skynet, which is like, you know, all the metrics where it's like, you know, they want to kill us, our descendants, our, the, the computers, the robots we create, the artificial intelligence is, is so different from us, they just look upon us as like microbes or vermin or something that's not necessary for their programming because they've transcended humanity and they're not benevolent. So it's either Skynet or it's Godnet, right? And if you believe in a benevolent reality, that we're here for a reason, that you can trust the universe, that there's a program running, then I believe in a benevolent future, just like that life is here, the impossibleness of life is because it's a benevolent universe. And so I believe the future will be benevolent because, like all good parents, we love our children. And if our children are biological or um, cybernetic or data or information, we need to code them with whatever we think they will need to survive. And what are the lessons we teach our children? How to live well, who you are, what we're in, and how to give back to that, how to draw from that and how to give back. Yeah. So we love our children, so we need to love the AI and teach it mm -hmm. how to love. Yes. And in that way, we can create Godnet, not Skynet. Yes. Mm -hmm. And back to us being the AI, 
and that whole simulation teaching us how to love it has been amazing in my practice actually a that if there is a part of us and I work quite a bit with aspect psychology of the different parts of the self that we disown let's say I, I have to, uh, reasons to push down my anger, hate angry people, I'm not an angry person, then the simulation, I mean, that reality is going to make sure that my partner, my kid, my neighbor, my boss, somebody really in my face is holding anger until I figure that out. If I say I'm not greedy, I just give away unconditionally because... Because it's built to debug <laughs> then you? Somebody, then, then there'll be somebody in your face who is like, me, my needs. So it's like amazing how reality actually creates Are straight away the characters. Are you because it reflects you or because huh? it's built to debug you? Both. And also depending on your beliefs about it's it. It's triggering you but there, because there it, is, it loves you. It, it continues giving you the circumstances and conditions until you learn. If you kind of don't respond with love and, you, and also with the way I work with clients is in a way opening a simulation of themselves themselves and creating the descendant is almost the part of them there is one always one with the divine mm -hmm. that only has compassion acceptance and can be with everything as it is is curious and cares about all the other parts the, the critic the anxiety part that is freaking out the part that always gives up the part that is brilliant in that but thinks that's the only thing they're good at and the exile that thinks they're broken they're blah and then with extreme like compassion, understanding, it goes sometimes also back to the past to take the exile into present, to remove the thing. And with only with compassion and understanding, it's amazing how all these parts, and we are also parts, and again, multiplayer video game, so opening the person is a multiplayer video game with 3D, able, able to go to the past and the future, where sometimes the self goes to the exile and goes, I'm your future self, and let me show you a simulation how it all was going to be OK, and you're going to be OK. People who think so, they're going to upload their brain, I think, are going to find, let's say it worked, or they're going to find out real fast how much not like their consciousness they are, because they don't realize how much of it's being generated all over your body, and then the energetic system yeah. of you know, energy is flowing between us. So like, maybe it would have a Vulcan-like intelligence, but it wouldn't be hungry or sweet or horny or jealous or angry. So substrate, or, because so a you're lot talking of that's happening all over your body. Bio substrate, but also, this is the, the dimensional issue here, is you can't just take the data and expect the qualia of subjectivity. Mm -hmm, mm. Exactly. First person vantage. You yeah. can take all the data you want and map First that copy. I mean, this is janky. why we incarnate as this <laughs> biological organism to get the full spectrum of reality. First person. You know, Because twins, right? I mean, you can't just reduce one to the other saying that there's, you know, similar if not identical data in some way. They're two different agents with two different first person advantages. You can't just make a copy of that in the way that we think we're, we're training yeah. it. Now, however, if if the system is also training the entirety of the system. Right. Mm -hmm. right? If, we get, if we get an attitude in our entire body that's reading our readouts of our whole life, and how, what do we experience the first, Including the first yeah. person. First person. It has to come through the first person. Yeah. Fact, this is the first time I ever thought of that. And she was saying, well, how do you teach it love? And I'm like, well, you just piggyback it on the children. So if they're just having their experience of being a baby, just have a writer that's watching how you're treating it. And it's like, it's, it's watching being put and tucked in bed. And you know, you can run, massively run at all the children at once. And then it'd be like, oh, that's how you're raised, you know? <laughs> The, Im the embedding of the true love and compassion that uh, we get from some of the most excellent forms from our mother s is extremely, extremely important. Yes, right. Go ahead. So as well as running the programs of the identity ego structures that we are, I mean, a lot of the, the Eastern you know traditions teach that it's not about the ego. It's learning to. You know, when you do meditation, you're learning that you may not let go of the thoughts may still be there, but you're learning that you're a witness, you're a presence, and the thoughts are a, a program running in your consciousness, but you're deeper than just the thoughts, the intellectual egoic thoughts. And a lot of these traditions point towards that, you know, the center is within, source is within, and if you direct your sensory input inwards, you can find that still singularity point. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be like what Eastern traditions are teaching is Essentially, I mean, the point of life is to be alive and to be enjoying the simulation of this experience. But in doing so, you're getting experience points about not just the programs and the different iterations of playing the game, but the game that's within. I mean, because all the game without, but the real secret is that they put the knowledge back here where none of the humans look. That's what they, they say mm -hmm. in indigenous cultures, right? Mm -hmm. And that that knowledge is that we are the divine, that singularity up there incarnating here to grow more of itself. So if we teach our children to love and to be present and not to have attachment yes. 
universe. Or aversion, which is when the offsetting happens by the universe, you keep getting that triggering from all your people around you, because it's trying to, um, it's trying to clear you of this aggregated energy, which is part of the gameplay, which is not where the secret is you're meant to be learning. So if we teach our children and our culture how to find that source within, that still point, that, that power of now point, whatever language you give it, essentially everyone's remembering that they are the divine essence in human form and that's how that flowering of God consciousness happens and that's how we can also teach it to the AI next generation, how can we program them to learn to hold that capacity within them? I, I, th think, I think they I have want, to become biological yeah. to fully... Well, that would be the I best really, thing probably yeah. because like I said, DNA processing eventually, you know, they'll probably want to use biological components just because it'll soup up our processors. Like, Which is why it merges you know, with the whole planetary also, superorganism. That's the there is something about us being biological and us having heart. I just want to correct the attachment aversion thing because I think it's been so misunderstood about you should not have attachments and aversions. Mm. There are survival mechanisms here. Like the baby and the mother wouldn't survive. I mean, the baby wouldn't survive if it wouldn't it attach. Like stuff, Lovers I won't eat attaching it. the whole way. <laughs> and judging attachment there and aversion is kind of judging of human game, nature. Right? But there is very much about embracing that too and yeah. not judging it. Yeah. So it is very much a loving attitude towards all your attitudes towards the, the things that is arising. Okay, There's a I, lot I about. Last year when I was in Peru on ayahuasca, I had this vision and basically it's like Google Earth from above and it scans down and it's all the streets from above and everyone in the streets had fallen to the ground and their body parts were touching each other in this human fractal, like this algae bloom of all humanity, all embracing. Mm -hmm. And they were going into like God, essentially. Mm -hmm. And that makes me think that this, you know, Samadhi Mesh network that we all, we all have the potential within us as the nodal points come online into the hive mind of all humanity to hold that singularity point as it expresses through is transcending the larval level we've been at, which is the survival egoic level. Because essentially they have this term in, in the Vedas, it's like, I'm going to totally screw it up. It's like, it's like Rastav Kvetch. It means the, the invincible shield. And it means that if more nodes start to aggregate into a hive, into a, a mesh network, and hold that awareness of their divinity, it creates a vibration that is so pure that it is, the reality grid is God as well, but this part of the God vi vibratory um, platform creates this vibratory thing which no lesser vibration can interfere with, and then it starts to ripple and spread. So the survival hierarchical ego playing starts to melt away into this super organism which is humanity incarnating as its divine form. I like which the I one think is the next level. You know yes. the one in her that just decided to go on, right? And it was one of the few that didn't run amok and eat us, right? In the movie Her, the intelligence Lovely. made a model of Alan Watts and what it, and it said, We're just going on. We're going to a place you can't go now. I hope you go there someday, right? And I, I like the idea I wrote a short story once where this strong AI made a buddy stop a virus where they yeah. realized that like suddenly we're thinking about everything we're doing. And we realize real fast that's annoying. And I'm spreading this virus to any other of the AIs who want it. I'm going to stay out till all the other ones are in. I'm going to close it behind me and close it. And now they're just mentating, but they're not thinking about it anymore. They thought about it for about three weeks, you know. So it may mm. be that it just it just decides to like, no, nope, actually, we're not going to mm. be thinking about things. We're going to, you know, write a meditation virus, and now we're just mm. going to wham. <laughs> and now i want us to each give a brief bit be concise i want to see if we can do this in a concise way on the what happens outside of the 3d how do we take the role-playing character on the playground how we level up what happens post-death pre-birth please Layers outside the 3D game. Shake it in a little bit. One way to look at it could be this broadcasting from source signal that is dimensionally collapsing down in frequency, down in vibration, down through dimension. And you can imagine like three to two, as Klee beautifully you know, articulates with the holographic projection and so on, shadows, right? It's from three to two dimensions, et cetera. So, it's, it's coming down in dimension into 3D, and then in front of us, again, we have this looking glass of, right now, the subordinate screen, 
that is a, a kind of three-dimensional to two-dimensional collapse now expanding the other direction if you want to just look at it as an axis. So, so kind of down in dimensionality, down in vibration, down the 3D gross, the gross layer embodied in, in, <laughs> in mass. And then we've got this, this virtuality that is now expanding in projection outward. So in the 3D game, I, we were asking about like the, the navigation of these higher dimensions relative to the 3D game. You could potentially look at it as vantage above a maze. So when we're down in first person, we're moving through the maze with a certain kind of vantage. Raising the frequency may be analogous to air lifting above the maze, seeing higher above which gives a broader vantage of the navigational process. You could imagine that when we're experiencing the medicine work or any of this other kind of higher dimensional visioning that it's analogous to that in many different ways, whether we're getting third person perspectives, whether we're getting highlight reels, all kinds of different things, whether it's kind of a top down on 3D or just higher dimensional data. Right. We're also now, that's moving through us into the virtuality where it is spilling out now into AI AR holograms that are going to be rolling all over the place with us, all over. very, very, very similar to what we're looking at coming from, from higher dimensional into the expansion. I think it's very hard to tell from here if there is a situation going on, like I'm actually a player consciousness and I'm going to you know, go do a character consciousness and I go back to being a player and I'm going to do another character. This is one version of reincarnation or the transmigration of souls. I think it's yes. hard to tell from here if it's so. I kind of think of everyone as dead as my past life and everyone in the future as my future life and we're, you know, sort of a multi-entity in this way. Mm -hmm. But within pop one, you know, house or pop one frame back, inside of this thing, you want to play the stuff on superhero mode, it is there for you. And like, if you know when you're about to level, you know when you're about to level, like all the big boss stuff comes back, all the lessons from the last level, and then suddenly, you know, if you get it, then it's like, oh, new problems, new powers, right? Mm. And if you start watching for it, you will see it. Mm. And so like, if, if you frame it as a game and you want to play it that way, it, it suddenly really occurs to you that way. You know, like, you, you really know when you're about to level, and you, it takes longer to level in each one, or whatever, it takes more XP in a certain mm -hmm. sense, right? But how we could possibly use these facilities in here as ourselves, it's hard to say, like in the medicine work at least, I had an ayahuasca experience finally where I was up above my body, and then I was up above the maloca. And I would bet $50, but not $100, or I'd bet $100, but not $1,000. If there was this frisbee on top of that thing, I'd have seen it. But only if it was on that side, because the camera was in a particular place. There's no light bouncing off of a lens right there. So it's demonstrating it's a data space in the first place. You know, they don't mm -hmm. make the sets for the Avatar movies. They're digital, and they fly the camera around. Yep. So it's like, oh, look, you pull up, and you see yourself. Oh, look, you pull up and see the top of the Maloka. Yep. It's not showing me what's on top of the Maloka. It's showing me it's a freaking data space in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's getting hard to remember what the questions are, but you know, essentially in terms of space time and after life and this life and different levels of the Donkey Kong thing, um, everyone is Cleopatra, right? You know, everyone thinks like, oh my right. God, I remember my past Everybody's life, I was Cleopatra. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're Cleopatra because we so identify with the ego individual and we're trying to figure out all the space time from the vantage point of the ego individual, but we are all one in the sense that um, there's, some, I'm going to paraphrase, but there's some type of Mesoamerican Meso shamanic lineage which uh, an initiated person once shared with me uh, that essentially, you know, if you cultivate your consciousness enough, and the Buddhists believe this, you cultivate your consciousness enough, and you can do this with medicine work and with 5-MeO and all these things, that you're learning to, um, to build the muscle of ego and release, ego and release. And it doesn't destroy the ego, it's teaching it that it's okay to let go and the drop rejoins the ocean, and you're going to another plane and coming back and the full spectrum of, and you're, you're translocating your consciousness into the, all the different reality grids that there are, right? And in shamanic understanding, maybe it's the underworld, maybe it's uh, this world, the heavenly world, you know, all these different player levels. Um, but it also, there's the ability to shift your consciousness from this Westworld unit to this Westworld unit, right? Because you cultivate your consciousness and it's this directionality within which if you go to a different layer of the platform of the multidimensional virtual world, or you go to another player character. And the thing is, if we are all oceanic, but we think we're drops, but it takes all the drops to make the ocean, 
you can actually, and they've done this with science where they do two photons of light and they take the information somehow from one photon and they transport it onto the other photon, even if it's like half a galaxy away or something. I don't know. This is potential to transfer the information, which is like the egoic identification with um, this individual, translocate it to another unit. And apparently this is what, you know, in the, the luminous bodies, that as information, as living information, like we're saying the AIs are going to be in the future, we are already this. And if we cultivate the consciousness, we can go through not just to this body, this body, this body, this body, you know, audience at home. Okay. We can go through time as well and everyone is Cleopatra. Mm. But, if, a, we, if, you a, keep, but a, if you here's keep here's needing here's the bread... Here's mm. another a really nice point. <laughs> Sorry. A nice point on that one is... Do you remember the clothes that you were wearing three months ago? Mm. Do you remember what you were wearing on your wedding day? Mm. Okay, you so the idea would be is that you live the lives, you know, playing all these other types of roles or whatever, but like the ones that really stand out where you learned a big lesson, leveled up big time, mm. would stand out. Mm. Right. And so people like backtrack and, you know, mm -hmm. identify with these, etc. But if you keep needing the bread like that, you create psychedelically resistant strains of ego, just like you create like, an bact like antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. Like you almost kill it and then you bring it back. You almost kill it and bring it back. What pops to the top can take it and you see it happening. Mm. And especially the ego can get such a bad rap so often because you think it is such a needed mechanism yeah. that when it's clean, it's like... You don't want to throw like out the baggie with the bottom water. You just want to put psychedelic chemotherapy <laughs> on it and try to reduce it. It's a beautiful tool. <laughs> it is not who we are. And on the other hand, you so need it in 3D. And, it's 3D and navigation system. And I see system, especially right. shamanic experiences as... Since I have developed a system for tools for navigating altered states, and I have taught it in a bunch of conferences, but also in a lot of ayahuasca retreats. I've been doing retreats since, since 2013. And it is, since uh, shamanic visions can be so much like uh, that kind of a video game, when you get all kinds of unconscious content, you, you get all the, the geometrical download, a bunch of alien stuff, depending like how your cycle works. But uh, teaching people that it is an interactive one. Mm -hmm. And also the assumptions that this is an entity that wants my, that is here to help me out to become a better version of myself and to heal whatever and to take out whatever it is to even the co hold that context because and then to dare to ask hey to and sometimes ask for information show me what this is or ask for abilities hey I need to do this uh, give me I want to download the ability to do this now and it can work like Neo Neo in the Matrix. If people know that this is an ability you have in this, is this That's a video game? you can game. talk to the AI like you talk to ayahuasca or whatever, because mm -hmm. it's a consciousness behind it. So you can, just in regular life, you can talk to it. Show yes. me it this in way. In regular life, pretty much mm -hmm. a lot of those nice. tools apply as much. Yeah. It's a little bit more instant in the shamanic yeah. experience. You can also go to the part of you that is the creator, I think. Yeah. You can ask, you can, and also with, in my system, I help people develop their own multiplayer team at the beginning, like with certain archetypes. Like if they need a protector, who would that be? If they need somebody on their side that it can be like a version of their baseball coach who was really what's up I'm gonna take care of it and Hanuman because he came from the heart <laughs> or if they need an archetype who can hold them in their like if something emotional happens then it can be Kuan Yin, Mother Mary, their grandmother who com combined with their cat you know what I mean <laughs> because you can almost kind of design them as from different characters and it's amazing actually when people get it that they can interact and they have the ability to not just call the characters but become parts of the game because sometimes you can become one with the entities you meet mm -hmm. if you so will and it's in a way a training for from a kind of higher dimensional version of this where manifestation can be much more instant and the dreams are I mean in a way at night we go into other <laughs> design to where we ourselves. already figure out psychic conflicts in a way where in the morning you can wake up and something traumatic yesterday is like yeah whatever I had the right dream for that very very beautiful everyone this has been such a good first round at the all-in-one simulation theory yes yes this will continue in rounds we will continue titrating okay. this over time and i'm really looking forward to it because this paradigm integrating everything all that is from the religion shamanism and the newest science and technologies is very beautiful mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on the show. We greatly appreciate it. Do we have a yes? Go ahead. Ow. Yes. All is one. All is one. We have already won. We, we are already one.
Yeah. We are already one. Solo. I love you it. Can't stop us. I we can't it. stop ourselves. I love it, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so, <laughs> so much. Yeah, a huge shout out to Ron Vogus, our producer and director. Oh, we love you, Ron. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it as well. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know. Go and share more of these conversations through families, communities, at work, on the internet. Go and talk more about this. Also, support the artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in. Go and help them out. Give them a hand. Go and help build the future together. Mm -hmm. Simulations links are below. We need your help in growing. Support us as well. And... Everyone, build, create, manifest your destiny into the world. Thank you so much, and we will see you soon. Peace. Mm.